restricted voice on issues affecting you in the UK. Join us live every Monday at 10 a.m. to 12 noon. As part of our continued efforts to reach the African and other ethnic communities in the United Kingdom with greater impacts and create the platform to hear your silent and unheard views in this hugely green community in the United Kingdom, our channel, Ben TV, presents to you another live current affairs television program. Our focus on the program is to review and discuss issues around the diaspora community in the UK. The program offers you that unrestricted voice on issues affecting you in the UK. Join us live every Monday at 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Welcome back and the program is still Dialogue in Diaspora. Come to you live from Ben Television. This morning we are talking about taking advantage of the uh, the crisis in the housing sector. Now our guest today is Mayowa Oluyede, CEO MS Estate. Uh, so Mayowa, Mr. Oluyede, thank you for joining us on the program today. Good morning. Thank you for having me once again. Great. Uh, let's quickly review the housing sector in Britain. Tell us, how is it like? Yeah, the housing market is, uh, is very interesting. For the last, I'll take it from the last 15, 20 years. And uh, the story has always almost shortage. The government every year is supposed to be producing about 250 to 300,000 prop homes every year. And we're just, we're only, in 2015, the government only achieved about 143,000 new homes in this economy. And that is not sustainable. It's not enough for the number of houses within in this country. And prices have been going up and up and up and keep going up, even though it's a circle. We saw what happened from 2000 to almost 2007. Property were just rising on the high trend. We experienced the crisis, went there a little bit, and back with vengeance. Where we are now, almost average uh, salary earners will find it difficult to own a property in the UK because average property price in London is about 400,000 pounds. Wages are not rising as people should expect and a lot of people cannot afford to buy their first home. And that's a big problem. Government has come with various schemes like the, the right to buy scheme, the help to buy scheme, even at that, the share ownership schemes. So many schemes are there, but the bottom line is we need more houses. They need to encourage private investors to come in and do so much. The new white paper that came up about, I think, a couple of weeks ago, they talk about encouraging small property developers to come in. Government is going to release some funds that will enable them to participate with the big boys. The big boys are controlling this market and you just need to know what they know for you to be able to take advantage of this market. What is driving the housing prices up? This is economics, demand and supply. The demand and supply. We have shortage. And as a result of that, price keep going up. A shortage. The people are not dying as they should die anymore with, with improvement in science and medical science. People are living longer. People are living 70, 80, 90, 100. And as a result of that, there's no, that we, we need more houses. If people are not dying as they used to, that means they're, they're living longer. Mm -hmm. If they're living longer, new people that are just children coming, are being children born. are being born, immigration, immigration is coming in. Economy is doing well in some level, and foreign investors want to take advantage of this. And real estate also is an opportunity where people can, if, it's, if you invest well, there's security of your funds. So you have these hedge funds, mutual funds, insurance companies, pensions has failed, so they're putting money in real estate. So the price is going up and up and up. And every London is the, is the capital of the world indirectly. A lot of people want to have part of the action. And this is why the price is going up. With the recent Brexit stuff, the pound is low. So people are looking for opportunities. And if the pound is, the pounds have lost about almost 20% of its value if you compare it to the, to the dollar. 
So people are investing. Foreign investors come and take advantage of that. So even though in, in central London, the prices kind of dropping, but in, in the other neighborhoods from zone four downward, prices are still slightly going higher. And out of London, there is bargain to be, to be made out there. Uh, but people like you, uh, who are investors in the housing sector, you, you, you believe people can make money. I mean, with, with the scenario you've painted, it, it does look gloomy. How, how do you then say to people, this is the best time to come into this sector, this is the best time you can invest? You uh, see, investing in real estate is a long-term journey. The savvy investors, smart investors, know that real estate is a circle. They know when to get in, they know when to get out. The, the best time to invest is now. But how do you invest when, when the, everything is on the high side? Yeah, it's on the high you side. You just say 400000 for probably two bedroom flat? Yes. How do you raise that? How yeah. do you cope with that? <laughs> how do you manage that okay. for an average Anna. Okay, interestingly. You see, for average Anna, the truth of the matter is you need to go to where your income can support. A lot of people don't face the reality. People live in central London, they want to buy in central London. What stops them from going to Tibri? What stops them from going to Kent, especially people of color? We want to hang on with the Joneses. You go to where your income can support and leave those neighborhoods that you cannot afford. People are buying outside. In fact, people are now going to, as far as Southampton, people are going to Luton, people are going to Colchester, people are going to uh, as many places that is. But can you walk in London and then go and buy a property in Colchester? Why not? There's a fast train that, that will convey you from Colchester to central London. People even live in Meeting Kings. People live in... Uh, uh, so many areas that is serviced with good train system. We don't need. We don't need to live in London. If you really want to own your own property, because house ownership is aspiration. Because it's a matter of time. It doesn't matter where you live. I know people who live as far as uh, South End on Sea, and they work in Central London. Even with the government plan, they're going to come get a train from Birmingham to London, fast train, is a matter of time. The most important thing is, with your little resources, do your very best to start that first journey of owning your first home. There will be price differentiation everywhere, but you know what, for, for, for an average uh, earners, you know what your income can support. And just face the reality. My income can support a property in Kent. Today, you can still buy a property in Kent for as little as 150, 140, 160, 180, 200. You can't get that in central London. It's not possible. So you go to where your income can support. People of color, they don't want to face the reality. People change job and go to Birmingham, Manchester. And in Manchester, you get property for 80,000, 100,000. If you have a skill set that can be transferred to another neighborhood, why not? Nurses, a lot of nurses can pick a nursing job anywhere in the country. And they're living well because housing or rent is almost 60, 50 to 60 percent of a lot of people's wages in this country. And once that is taken up, they have little disposable income to okay. be able to cope. A apart from renting, Buying a house to live in. What about people like you are champions of buying a house for investment, somehow to some extent? Okay. How does that happen? You, what kind of investment do you put on a house in Colchester or Manchester or in Birmingham or in Liverpool, even as a black man or whatever, as a minority, ethnic? Minority background. Okay, let me let me let me say this to you, uh, Tunde. Even before I answer your question, 
There's a government scheme going on presently that is called the right to buy. How if does that work? Right to buy is when you, if you are a tenant in a council property and you've lived there for more than three years above, you can buy this property. And there's a discount. If it's in London, as of today, government is giving a discount of £103,900, I think, as a discount to enable people to be able to buy their first home. So government is doing their own little bit. We as individuals need to do our own part. Yes, people might say, oh, I might not be able to afford that. But there is a lot of people that have not even tried that. A lot of people are out there, they've not tried that. And the scheme is there. It's been there for ages. They've just increased it about two, three, three years ago, increased the allowance. But getting the mortgage to support that is another issue. See, getting mortgage, the bank wants to lend. There's a lot of lenders out there. The truth of the matter is, if you want to lend money out, people must also qualify. If you have good credit, and you have a good job, and you have the stay to live in this country, it's a matter of approaching a broker or approaching your bank to know how much you can, they can borrow you. Even when you have bad credit, these days there are some subprime lenders that are coming back into the market. After the collapse of the economy, the recession in 2007 eight, so many of the subprime lenders were out of the market. But they're coming back now. They're coming back. If you don't try or ask, you won't know. The first thing is to, okay, I want to embark on this journey. How do I go through this journey? Who is doing what in this journey that can help me? If you want to buy a house now, you don't go and push your bank to even qualify to know how much the bank can lend you. You don't have that information. Or you go to a broker and seek for help. Hey, Mr. Broker, I'm thinking of buying a house. How much do I qualify for? It's the first thing first. People must do first thing first. It's just, it's not fair to say, oh, it's not possible to get a mortgage. People are still getting mortgage, even in this economy. With the challenges in the housing market, people are still having a headway and still making money. Mm. Okay. Um, I've been talking with um, Maya Oluye, the, the CEO MS Estates. Yeah, uh, your office is somewhere in East London. Yeah, we have two offices. We have uh, one in Dagenham, and we have one on Torok High Street. You, you, apart from you managing um, multi-million pounds um, estates, yeah, you also coach people on, you do training and coaching on how people can take advantage of housing sector in London. Yes, we... I mean, what, how, how do you... Say you are addressing my viewers at home who, who, who are interested in getting their first property and they are very meager salary and they, look, they feel like, okay, what do we do? I, I, I mean, I've, I've heard you say even without money, you can get your own first property. How does that work without, <laughs> without <laughs> money? <laughs> you see, there, there, are, there are so many strategies out there, but let's even do the one with money. Okay, I've just told you about the right to buy government scheme. Okay. Husband and wife can come together, that's a partnership, and buy their first home. Husband and wife. Even if you are not husband and wife, two friends can come together and buy. It's just being creative. The first thing is you have to be intentional to say, this is a desire I want. I want to own my first house. Either now four or five people can even team up together to buy a house, and the bank will lend. I've seen friends. Four people teamed up together, buy their first home, and they start doing that gradually. How, how, how does that work? Four people? Yeah, four people. How Different does that incomes. Work? So you, that's four bedroom flats? It could be three bedroom, it could be four bedroom house, it could be, but the, the, the most important thing is seeing four people team up together because income is an issue when you want to buy property, the bank will want to see your income. So you, say for arguments, uh, for an example or illustration purposes, we have four people that are averagely earning thirty thousand pounds each. Thirty times four is one twenty thousand pounds. If the bank lend times four of that income to them, they're able to buy a property that they, they value. But how do they lay 
claim to such a property that this is my property? Four people. Four people. They had four names will be on the land registry. They have 25, 25% share of it. Equal. Equal mm. ownership. Equal ownership. Is, is, is a challenge for people of color because we don't do things together. So it can, can be kind of scary to, mm, four people. Everybody wants to do their own thing, but that could be the easy way to penetrate into the market because the price keeps going up and it's going to continue going up. So we have four people, yeah. four friends or yeah. whatever, coming together to buy three-bedroom flats. Yeah. How do they manage that to move on to the next level? Okay. Statistically, in the UK, property double almost between 8 to 12 years in value. That's one. Secondly, if they're educated to know what to buy. For me, I try to buy property at below market price. I look for property that needs modernization. Property maybe even from auction. Slightly cheaper than the open market price and add value to it. It's, it's all about being creative and having knowledge of the market because you could buy a property that is normally worth 100,000 for 80,000. People sell for different reasons. You need to know why somebody is selling. You see people, they are going through divorce, they want to sell. People are going through relocation, they are relocating out of town and they've got equity, they don't want to keep two homes. They sell at a discount. Even you see the developers, they give 5% discount, vendors gift. Developers are giving first time buyer incentives to buy. So you can buy a property and you get a vendor to give you a, a discount to buy that first home. If you don't ask, you don't get. The challenge is a lot of people go to, they walk into the estate agents and say, okay, that property, I want it, and they start competing. Savvy investors look for opportunities. They look for opportunities. They look for houses that nobody wants, houses that need modernization, houses that require cleanup from top to bottom, and they make money from it. Because if you buy a property that, that requires refurbishment, yes, you are going to spend money to refurbish, but you could also add value to that, which could be used for that next purchase. Because if a property that is worth 100000 you bought it for 80000 75000 spend 5 grand, 10 grand to fix it up, and in six months' time, its value is worth 125 or 130 You've added value to this. And we, what that means is you can refinance in six months or one year and take all the equity out of that property and use it for the second property. And you just keep repeating the same process. That's how a lot of these buy-to-let investors, that's what they do. They look for opportunity, maximize the opportunity, raise, move money from that, and do the next project. So it becomes a project for them. You see people have only four or five properties. How did they do it? They keep recycling funds from one property to the other. If I bought my first home maybe in 2003 and today is double, I take money from that property and produce more. It's like a farmer who has a seed in his hand. If that seed is not planted, he can't have an harvest. It's the same thing with property. A lot of people, especially in our community, have a property. They are looking at how to finish paying it up, which is good. But well, there's money, equity, sitting down in that property doing nothing, which they can put to work. As of today, interest rate is as low as 3 5%. In fact, 5% is like too expensive. 3 point something, 2 point something, you know. So people can take advantage of that. Remortgage. You hear about parents now helping their children to own property. What are they doing? They are refinancing their own property, take money out, give it to their children to come on the property ladder. There are so many ways for people to start this job. It's a journey. And so four people can get a fairly dilapidated property, mm -hmm. enhance it, yeah. occupy it, yeah. wait one more year or yeah. two years, yeah. it appreciates, take the equity out, buy another one. Another one. So that's two, that's two, two down and two, two to go. To go. So in about five, six years, they will have probably got four properties. Possibly, if they are creative. Or six properties. If they look for... Or six years. See, even, even in two years, if they focus on looking for 
property that needs modernization, property that require new, you know, to add value to, they could achieve it in two years. Because every six months they can be buying another property. Because they have good income, the, two, the four incomes is enough for any bank to say yes to them. They do the first one as where to live, where probably they need only 90% mortgage, and they do subsequent one as buy to let. They can even, the first one they can do what is called let to buy. Let that one to can, buy. Can you explain these one. technical terms, let to buy, uh, shared home ownership? Can we start from there? Okay. Share ownership is a, a scheme that is run by most of the development companies that we have in London, whereby you share your own part of the property. Mm. The property says what hundred thousand pounds. Okay. Your income cannot support hundred thousand pounds. Okay. So you are saying, okay, based on my income, I can only afford fifty percent of this value. So you share. You partly own the property, and the developer also own part of the property, 50-50. At one point in time, if you are capable to buy the remaining share, you buy it. That's what share ownership is. And let to buy is, okay, I'll, I've bought my first home. I've owned it for four years. I want to rent it out. And I say, Mr. Bank, I need another, I want to buy another property. Maybe family has grown. You have more family now, maybe family of three. It's not family of five. You need a bigger place. You want to rent out where you currently live to buy another property. So you can do let to buy. You want to let that property to buy, to buy another, another one. So the bank will give you money to the buy another, give you another one. Yeah. So who manages the rent on the force on the bank or you? No, no. It's your property. Bank is not interested in managing any property They're for just anybody. Interested in you, it's either you, your mortgage. it's either you or you get a, uh, an, a letting agent like us to help you manage it. Mm. Other schemes out there? There are some other schemes out there, but these are creative. There are, there are schemes like you rent now and buy later. It's more technical. I'm, I'm not sure I can explain that in detail in this in this uh, the time mm. I have. But so basically, for for the ethnic minority diasporans in the UK, um, you you would rather suggest that look, if you do not have enough income, look towards getting your first property outside in an environment that is not very very competitive. Almost every environment is competitive because, but the truth of it is, the the being on the property ladder. Is, is a job well done for you already. I've seen people, I, I, I know of a friend that their first property, they bought it many years ago in Tibri, when property were like 30, 40,000. Then, and from there, many years later, they refinance it and move further to the town. The challenge is not doing something. We want to wait till everything is perfect. We need to just start from where we are. Two friends can team up. Husband and wife can team up. Because you're on a mission, you know what you want to achieve. We want to buy our first home. Or even parents that bought before, remortgage, help their children. I say, son, daughter, I'm going to help you with your first home. This is 50000 from our property. That's for your deposit. The major challenge for people is the deposit. Some people have good income, but they can't save. And that's a challenge for them. And also, in the area of saving, if people can develop the habit of saving every month, it's tough, but you can put it on autopilot. Direct debit to an account that you can't touch. 200, 300 pounds every month. In a year, if it's 300 pounds, that's 3,006. It takes you five good years or more to be able to accumulate that deposit or even get a second job, or start a business, something that can give you extra income. The, f the challenge is people just take it that, mm, it's not going to be possible, it's not possible. I've just told you about four friends now, four friends teaming up. People don't think of that. They are waiting for when they can do it alone. You even see husband and wife, husband wants to buy separately, wife wants to buy separately, and the income cannot support it. Even those who have good income because of where they want to live, it could be a challenge. So people need to be thinking of creative ways 
the bank come up with the idea that parents can support their children because they know that there is that challenge of income. And they, they put a charge on their property so that when those property appreciates, you and I know that property will appreciate no matter what happens in the economy. Is it Regardless of Brexit. Brexit or no Brexit. Brexit is, for me, I don't even know what to say. This is, what, this is what Brexit means. Brexit, when there's a disruption in the economy, it brings opportunity. The smart investor will see the opportunity in Brexit. Some people will be scared and not take any action. Oh, property is going to crash. It's going to lose. They are waiting for when it's going to crash and it's not crashing. Even when it crash, the investors are the ones that will be picking it. So there's never a good time than now. You just take that first step to say, okay, I want to own my first home. Or if you've owned one before, you want to own the second one. People can become a property millionaire in this country if they only just have four properties. I've really two fifty thousand. That's one million. Do nothing, wake up in ten years or twelve years, even twenty years. It doubles in price. And they become a millionaire. Easily. Just four. So you've just told us the secret of your multi million pounds investment in real estate. It's just taking UK. action. <laughs> just 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 take action. All right, I've been talking with Mayowa Oluyede. Mayowa Oluyede is the CEO of MS Estate. And you also run some coaching programs as part of your activities to help the the African community to climb the ladder. Tell us more quickly what what are some of these things you do? How can you be reached quickly? Okay, I, I run a, I run a program called Property Millionaire Masterclass. Property Millionaire Masterclass. Masterclass. Property Millionaire Masterclass is is the basic just to get people into the to see the opportunity that is available in the real estate market in the UK. Mm. Even when you don't have much to start with. Mm. There are other things you can do. You know, say for, for example now, you, you want to get into the property market. You can become an associate with me. Just to say, okay, Mayo, I want to be helping you sell some of your properties. And you get commission from it. You make money from that. Even mm. not running, owning the, prop, the business. But every time you see somebody who wants to sell, and you introduce the business to the company, you get your own commission. People will start from that. Or people want to just, there's something called rent to rent. You rent the property from another estate agent and rent it out in, in rooms, and you still make money. There are so many strategies out there. There's lease option, there's, you know. I don't want to bore you with some of those terminologies, but there is always a way if people desire to say, okay, I want to know the skill in this industry. And that's what Property Millionaire Masterclass is all about. And interestingly, I think we're going to have another one coming up. We had, we had, we had a training last month. We're having another one coming up next month, I think, on the 18th. Where? Uh, it's when? going to be in Stratford. Stratford? 18th of March. Do you have a website people can visit? They can go, just go to my Facebook page for now. Okay. And just inbox me if they're thinking of... That is Mayo Waluyede. Mayo Waluyede. Go to my Facebook page and inbox me. That okay. I'm interested in coming for the Property Millionaire Masterclass. And we'll okay. send all the details to them. All right. I've been talking to Mayo Waluyede. Mayo Waluyede is the CEO of MS Estate. You also run a finance company? Yeah, we have a mortgage. We have a, we have mortgage broker in house as well. Mm. Who, if people are looking to buy their home and they're looking for a mortgage broker... We have a broker in house who can. I used to be a qualified mortgage broker, but for now I stop <laughs> advising. So we have people in the house okay. who can do that for them, mm -hmm. and uh, they just check on mssstate.co.uk. Okay, mssstate.co.uk. You can get more information about Maiwa Oluyedi, and I think it's time you took your first step on climbing uh, the housing ladder in the UK, no matter how difficult it might be. Uh, why don't you just, if you don't ask, you don't get. Uh, if you don't seek, you may not find. If you don't knock, it might not be opened. Uh, <laughs> I think the first step is to knock, and let's see maybe it's going to open, and the first step will probably be get in touch with the masters, the people who have made millions. Simple looking smart man, but a million seated with me. Share me before you walk <laughs> out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you so much, uh, my, uh, uh, Thank you for being part of the program today. We look forward to having you again. Thank of course, the next master me. class, uh, 
Millionaire class. Yeah, property millionaire master class. Coming up on the 18th of March. 18th of March. For more information, just check Mayawa Oluyede's Facebook inboxing and get more information. Or you go to msestate.co.uk and uh, give them a ring. Uh, we go on a very short break and I bring in my next guest. Don't go away. Program continues. In the UK. Join us live every Monday at 10 a.m. to 12 noon. As part of our continued efforts to reach the African and other ethnic communities in the United Kingdom with greater impacts and create a platform.